Okay, let's get more on U.S. China trade relations, also the Chinese economy, and even the markets. We have Charles Su, senior macro economy analyst for Shenyi Wanguo Securities, and he joins us this morning here in Hong Kong. In fact, you're on your way here to a Hong Kong conference. Nice to see you here, Charles. Let's talk about uh, the U.S. China mm -hmm. trade relationship. You just heard from uh, Commerce Secretary Gary Locke saying that there are barriers right now. What do you think they can achieve at the strategic economic dialogue that takes place next week? Well, I think uh, there's great concern over the, the, the uh, bilateral trade relationship between China and the U.S. And in the past, they have some restrictions on the U.S. exports to China because of security concern, national security concern from the U.S. side. Mm -hmm. And going forward, we believe uh, in the long run, U.S. has to return to the oil. As President Obama said, it plans to double its exports in mm -hmm. five years. And I think China is the, as the number two economy in the world, and it's important for the U.S. to explore the opportunities in China. Mm -hmm. So we, we expect the U.S. to uh, relax some restrictions over its export to China. Uh huh. Okay. You expect them to relax their exports or, or their imports to China? Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, well. In the past, the the U.S. has some tight regulations with exports, right. uh, especially high-end exports to China. Uh -huh. And uh, we expect it will relax some of its ex uh, restrictions to high-end exports. Right. But people are saying that's not, uh, it's not really, it's not the U.S. that doesn't want to export these goods to China. It's because there are these innovation barriers right now, these high technology barriers in China, where they only want to buy homegrown, homemade, basically, uh, technological goods. Well, uh, not exactly. Actually, China is purchasing high-end uh, products and China is in great need of those high-end products and uh, like like chips mm -hmm. and definitely China needs that mm -hmm. uh, and China is pushing for innovation but it's still behind the level that the U.S. has achieved. Yeah. So there's great market for the U.S. products. Okay, what about this controversial currency, the yuan at this point? You know, what do you think they might be able to achieve at the SED toss? Are we going to see some sort of yuan movement before then? Well, I'm not sure about that. In the long run, we certainly expect the RMB to appreciate, but it's still a political decision. We believe uh, this May and June is a sensitive time window for a uh, for RMB move, and especially ahead of G20 meeting, we expect mm -hmm. there's some adjustment in RMB policy. Uh -huh. Like, well, we expect probably the RMB will return to the uh, period when it's packed with a basket of currencies, mm -hmm. and probably we also expect uh, the uh, the government will double, uh, well, well broaden the daily trading band against US dollar, but uh, not. Not sure about ahead of SED or not, but uh, mm -hmm. this June, uh, this May and June is a critical now, some time. Some say, and some would argue that uh, move in the RMB is actually good for the Chinese economy right now because we're seeing signs of overheating, mm -hmm. uh, loan growth still expanding, inflation coming uh, to possibly hurt the economy. What do you think? Are there arguments for a higher and stronger RMB? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the RMB appreciation is good for pushing for China's structural adjustment. And, and um, well, uh, there's concern over the uh, overheating, but mm -hmm. I don't think the RMB appreciation will help a lot against the inflationary pressure mm -hmm. because in the past experience in 2007, 2008 shows, uh, even the RMB appreciates, it doesn't help much of the, the inflation pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the situation is China is mm -hmm. a big economy. Right. The, the pricing mechanism is tightened. It, it, well, the, the, uh, the pricing mechanism is tied with China's demand, not only with the currency. Okay, so what does China need to employ then to contain inflation? Interest rates? I mean, China seems very reluctant to move on interest rates. Well, I, I guess uh, if we're looking for, the, for a period like next six months, mm -hmm. the stronger dollar will help to curb the commodity prices. So we, we don't think the, the, the uh, inflation pressure is as serious as the, probably the market is concerned. Mm -hmm. And instead, what we are worried about is the inflationary pressure, uh, I mean inflationary expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at example, the potato prices rise substantially, like doubled mm -hmm. this year. Okay. And green bean price like tripled this year. Right. This is sort That's of not inflation. Inflation pressure is not inflation. Well, uh, as the components of China's CPI, 
the okay. the the okay. manufactured goods remain pretty Charles, stable. We gotta go though.